Hello everyone. Welcome welcome to Preserving the Harvest podcast. I'm Ellen O'Shea, gardener, plant lover, and kitchen spirit. Well, today we're going to be making salsa. Not just any salsa, but peach salsa. And I uh, want you to really have fun with this because you can add a lot of things to salsa. Uh, The first thing I want to emphasize though is about canning and I'm going to do another video about how to set your kitchen up to become a lab basically for preserving food so that you don't have a lot of issues with bacteria in your food. I've lost pears and other things in the past because I didn't properly sterilize something. I'm not really sure what that was about, but I'm very aware now that my jars need to be sterilized, my countertops need to be sterilized, uh, my food needs need to be sterilized. Like I, the tomatoes I'm gonna to show you today are just beautiful. They did not come out of my garden though. They came from other people's gardens. And so I'm really careful, not only with bringing things out of my own garden, but especially when I get them from other people. As soon as I get them into the house, I wash them down and I try to use them pretty fast after I've washed them because then you get this other environment where bacteria can grow. But the other thing is that when I'm using tomatoes particularly and other produce, I have some hot water sitting over here that they're gonna go through a slight bath for maybe one or two minutes that will sterilize them. And uh, when making salsa too, because there's so many ingredients in it that are almost raw, uh, you're mixing them all together. The, the recipe does call for once you put them in the jars to process them for 20 minutes. So that's a pretty good amount of time. But you don't wanna overcook salsa because then it's just not salsa, right? Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna share this incredible recipe with you. Um, Let's see. Oh, I just wanted to tell you, one of the things I always do while I'm preparing food and getting ready to can is I, in back of me I have a sink and it has water in it that has a little bit of bleach in it so that if I need to sterilize things quickly and I don't wanna, go out of this area it's just behind me and so the the recipe is pretty amazing and I'm going to include it down below so if you will look at our our podcast here on YouTube you'll see the recipes there Um, but a basic salsa is tomatoes and peppers and um, herbs and spices and it's you know garlic and all sorts of interesting things. But what I like to do is to enhance my salsa because I put them in these beautiful jars and I give them away at Christmas time to people. And I also have a great label that I do for my salsa that has all the ingredients on it and it says Ellen's Salsa and the date. But the ingredients are there because people have different needs as far as diet and this will let them know what's in there. But I always use organic. I, I make sure that my herbs are coming from a really good source and they don't have a lot of things added to them. They're pure oftentimes. My cilantro comes out of my garden. I don't have cumin right now, but I, in the past I have had cumin come out of my garden. So I, I know that where that came from, but I make sure that people understand what is in the jar and this beautiful jar and I don't know if you can see this but this is actually a bowl of the salsa that I'm going to be making today and it's really beautiful yeah right up here right okay okay so um, so let's get started Uh, first of all I'm kind of going to go through the recipe and then I'm going to go through each one of the ingredients and explain what why they are part of salsa and how the, you process it for the salsa itself. Um, so the first thing I do is uh, the recipe calls for three cups of diced peaches and six cups of diced ripe tomatoes. Now the peaches I make sure that they're very ripe and I've actually been collecting them through the season as I'm finding them very ripe and I 
take the skins off by dipping them in hot water and the skins come off and then I dice them very small and those that I've been collecting through the season I froze them but today I actually have a lot of fresh peaches because this is the season again and um, so they're all ready to go and then the tomatoes the tomatoes are really interesting because oh my gosh they're so beautiful I don't know if you can see this beautiful heirloom I think it's a brandy wine these tomatoes that I have today, I think this is a stupus, and um, they came from other sources. And so what I've done is to dip them in hot water. And I want to do that anyway I, for about a minute, because if you do that, the skins will come right off very easily. There you go. And also, you've just killed all the bacteria on it, so you're not putting them into your salsa. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put all these ingredients together, probably offline, but I just wanna go through the recipe with you now. Um, peppers are really important. Now these peppers are coming out of my hoop house, and there's, it, the recipe calls for Four jalapeno peppers diced very small. You remove the membrane and the seeds, and that's true of all of these peppers. I've got some chilies. I've got some cayenne. I've got this beautiful alma pepper that is a paprika pepper. It really pretty, adds a lot of color to your recipe. It also has a slight heat, but not much. Um, I have some Pueblo anchos here. I also have some green pepper, sweet peppers. And, um, and I basically, they're processed all the same way, which is to cut them in half, take the membrane and the seeds all, out of it. And I wear gloves when I'm doing that. That's why I'm not gonna do it right now. And don't rub your eyes, whatever you do. And uh, take the seeds and the membrane off and then dice them very, very small. So as I'm putting this recipe together, there's so many different parts of the recipe. I'm creating my dishes. I'm not putting them into the main bowl right now. I just want to make sure I have everything that I need in my recipe. Um, so a half cup of fresh cilantro. I did, I have been harvesting cilantro out of my garden through the season and I froze some of it, but today I went out and I got some more fresh and both of them work. They, the free, freezing the cilantro works very well too. Just remember that when you're processing them, you want to take the stems off uh, if you're going to freeze them because they get kind of gooey fresh. I could, if I dry it a little bit, I can put it in my blender and with a few stems and it'll make it more of a powder. But I don't really like chewing on stems in my salsa, so I try to just use the leaf. Um, let's see, uh, two tablespoons of honey, three garlic cloves diced very, very small. I have some beautiful garlic. I have both red and white garlic that I have, that I cut up the cloves and dice them really small and put them into the recipe. And uh, let's see, so one and a half cup of diced red onion. Now, I wanna to talk to you about these red onions because this is what I use in all my recipes that I can. It has such a nice flavor. I don't really like onions the way other people do. But I like to put them in recipes because they bring all the flavors together. And red onions are especially nice if they're slightly raw in your salsa. They don't overwhelm the recipe. And that's really important. That, I love using the red onions for my recipes and my canning that I do later on. I, I, all my sauces, my tomato sauces, I use red onions too. Uh, salt and pepper to, share, to taste, and one fourth to one cup of lime juice. This is my lime juice. I squeezed it from limes. I really like that flavor. There's a lot of limes in the stores right now, so that's really nice. And it calls for a quarter of a cup, but I actually use a half a cup. I love the taste of lime in salsa. So you can taste, you can put as much as you want in four tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. And this is really an important step for stabilizing all the flavors, um, bringing it all together, adds acid to your recipe so that you're not gonna get food poisoning. So it's really important, even if you don't like apple cider vinegar, you won't really taste it in the recipe, but it does stabilize 
the recipe. So you mix this all together and you pack it into your jars and you process them for 20 minutes. And then you let your jars set aside and you label them. And again, I'm gonna, I don't know if I showed you the labels. I actually run this on MS Word, which has a part of it for make, under the mailing uh, area for making labels and it's great. Every year I do this and sometimes I do really fancy ones like with art and everything on it too. But I've got so many ingredients that I didn't have a place to really do that, but this will work and people will know what is in your, your salsa. So um, now, there's some other beautiful things you can do right now. I went out this morning and I harvested wild black uh, blackberries. And I'm gonna add, so I'm gonna do several uh, of these recipes. Um, the first one's gonna be just simple um, peach with a little bit of, of papaya. The second one I'm gonna do will be all of the, that fruit plus the blackberries, because some people may not want the blackberries, although I think that they might. It's, it just tastes lovely, you'll really like it. And the, the big thing is you're gonna bring all these different flavors together. Oh, the one thing that I don't think I even have on here, I have to add to corn. So this corn is from, I took it off the cob this morning. This is from our corn from, that we grew last year. And I froze the cobs and we've been eating it all through the winter when we were almost done with it. I think we have like maybe six or seven cobs left and we've got corn growing in the garden, but it's not ready. The, gar the garden corn is not ready, but this is. So I'm going to use this. I took it off the cob this morning and add it to my salsa. And it just gives it such a nice flavor and texture. So um, corn is really important and it's not on this recipe. So I have to make sure that I do that when I put, it, put the recipe up for you to see. So that's what I have for you today. And I hope you'll enjoy making this and um, just have a really good time. It's such beautiful food. That's what I think. It's like painting, you know, all these different colors and flavors. And, um, you know, just have fun, right? Now, this is Ellen for Preserving the Harvest podcast. Remember, just for today, do what you can with what you have wherever you are. And I'll see you next time.